Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today we'll examine the various methods employed by a generic motor drive to decelerate a spinning motor and applied load. Our objective is to examine how motor drives coordinate coasting or free spin to stop. Springs had electrically released friction brakes, DC injection braking, and two types of dynamic braking, regenerative braking and dynamic braking making use of braking resistors to decelerate a spinning motor and applied load. This lecture is predicated to the assumption that viewers watch the ramping events for Motor Drive's lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Of the available methods, perhaps the simplest means a Motor Drive can utilize to de-energize a running motor is to immediately cease conduction without employing a deceleration period. This would be quasi-equivalent to the opening of an electromechanical contactor breaking connection to the power source. When de-energized, the motor drive executes a timed acceleration ramp up of applied voltage and excitation frequency. During constant speed mode, applied voltage and excitation frequency remain fixed. When de-energized, the motor drive immediately ceases conduction. The rotating magnetic field produced by the stator immediately collapses and the rotor and applied load coast or free spin to a stop. While suitable for some applications, free spinning to a stop is imprecise and can take a measurable time period for the rotor to come to rest if it has established a degree of rotational inertia. Additionally, a de-energized motor cannot lock the rotor in place for the purposes of holding a load. For this reason, motor drives make use of alternative deceleration braking methods, some of which you may already be familiar with given previous lectures at the Big Bad Tech channel have already discussed their electromechanical equivalents, examples being friction brakes, plugging to stop, and DC injection braking. Additionally, Motor drives, being sophisticated solid-state power electronics devices, are capable of executing dynamic braking events. Before examining these other methods, certain distinctions should be made between contact and non-contact deceleration braking methods. A friction brake is a contact method, and that is electromechanical in nature, in that it is composed of moving parts that have a very real possibility of braking or wearing out. An example being the sacrificial high friction pad making physical contact. These are consumable items, and part of regular maintenance procedures might be the inspection or replacement of the brake pads. This being said, by virtue of making physical contact and holding onto the rotor, a friction brake can actively lock a rotor in position. This allows a de-energized motor to hold a suspended object or lock something in place. Non-contact methods like DC injection braking and dynamic braking, while capable of decelerating an actively moving rotor, aren't particularly well suited for holding a de-energized motor in place. The minor exception being DC injection braking, which provides extremely limited holding capability. Non-contact methods don't have moving parts to wear out. However, they're limited only to decelerating a moving motor and not locking it in place. Motor drives can also make use of a combination of these methods taking advantage of the various characteristics. For example, decelerating a rotor using a timed ramp down of applied voltage and excitation frequency, then, following the timed deceleration event, locking the rotor in place with an application of a friction brake. The initial non-contact deceleration saves excessive wear on the consumable brake pads. However, the subsequent application of the friction brake locks the rotor in place. Let's examine each of these other deceleration methods separately, starting with friction brakes. Motor drives often include accessory electromechanical relay outputs capable of executing various functions. These accessory outputs can be used as an interface with other electrical loads or other systems necessitating different levels of control voltage. Consider a motor drive that needs to execute a controlled acceleration and deceleration in which applied voltage and excitation frequency is ramped over a user customizable time for the purposes of a soft start and soft stop. However, the brake solenoid necessitates full line-to-line -line voltage to energize the brake solenoid to completely disengage the friction brake. The multifunction electromechanical relay output solves this voltage mismatch by simply switching the full line-to-line -line voltage when signaled to do so by the motor drive. Let's assume the electromechanical relay output is configured to execute the run function, characterized by a change of states whenever the motor drive is actively accelerating, running, or decelerating the motor. When in the standby state, the normally open side of the electromechanical relay keeps the brake solenoid de-energized. Therefore, the spring-applied electrically released friction brake is engaged and the rotor is locked in place. When the acceleration period begins, applied voltage and excitation frequency ramp up. At the same time, the electromechanical relay changes states and energizes the brake solenoid with full line-to-line -line voltage, thereby disengaging the brakes 
and keeping them disengaged during the entire acceleration period, constant speed run, and deceleration period. Only after the deceleration period ends does the electromechanical relay output return to its deactivated normally open state. The spring applied electrical release friction brake is re-engaged to positively lock the rotor in place. A motor drive using this method of deceleration and braking really only needs to appropriately coordinate the action of an external device using an accessory electromechanical relay. Alternatively, using the normally closed side of the multifunctional electromechanical relay output executing the alarm function, one could configure the system such that the friction brake is engaged only during an alarm or error event. An alternative non-contact means of decelerating a rotor is via DC injection braking. If you recall, the operating principle of industrial three-phase AC motors is the establishment of a rotating magnetic field on the stator. The rotor is then compelled to follow this rotating magnetic field. DC injection braking is a method of decelerating a moving motor by halting the rotation magnetic field and applying fixed DC to the motor stator windings. When fixed DC is applied to these windings, the rotor quits chasing a rotating magnetic field and tries to align itself with a fixed magnetic field produced by the stator. This counter torque decelerates the rotor in applied load. Given the rotor has established some rotational inertia at the time of DC injection, this may take a couple of revolutions to decelerate. Each revolution becomes increasingly less rapid until the fixed poles align. The advantage of DC injection braking is that it uses non-contact electromagnetic interaction to decelerate the moving rotor and not physical contact means like a consumable friction brake that requires servicing. This being said, DC injection braking is a means of decelerating a moving rotor and not positively locking it in place. DC injection braking can provide a limited amount of holding power, however it's imprecise and not regularly employed. Here's a de-energized motor. Notice how the shaft moves quite easily. Here's a motor undergoing active DC injection braking. Notice it takes me a bit of effort to rotate the shaft while it is actively being braked. A motor drive making use of DC injection braking ordinarily coordinates this event using several different parameters. Notably, the DC injection braking power, typically expresses a percentage of available braking power, and the length of time the DC braking event occurs. Additionally, motor drives may also allow a DC injection braking event to be preceded by a brief free spin to stop or deceleration ramp down, characterized by a delay before the actual DC injection braking event begins. Properly configured with an appropriate power rating, time length, and if a free spin or deceleration delay is to be included, a DC injection braking event can decelerate a spinning motor without the necessity of making physical contact. Here's an example. Bam! On the money! Moving on. Motor drives can also make use of a wholly different class of non-contact braking method, collectively known as dynamic braking, of which there are two main types. Regenerative dynamic braking, and dynamic braking using braking resistors. We'll learn to differentiate the two methods in a moment after we've discussed dynamic braking as a whole. A certain amount of baggage comes associated with dynamic braking, namely asynchronous generation. You'll recall from way back in the mechanical power, torque, and rotational speed lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel, that the rotor of a squirrel cage induction motor must necessarily lag the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator for the induction process to work at all. The graph of torque and rotational speed shows that the motor exerts positive torque for rotational speeds below the synchronous speed. In this operational region, the motor consumes electrical power and converts it into rotating mechanical power. If however some outside external force, let's say expanding steam, falling water, moving wind, or in our case a motor with an applied load carrying a degree of rotational inertia was capable of turning the rotor faster than the synchronous speed established by the stator, we've effectively turned this motor into a generator. A more comprehensive graph of torque and rotational speed for both aspects of a single electrical machine shows that any rotational speed in excess of the synchronous speed results in a negative or counter torque being exerted to slow the rotor. A generator is essentially consuming rotational mechanical power and converting it into exportable electrical power. Recall in the ramping events for motor drives lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, then a motor drive can execute a time deceleration ramp down of applied voltage and excitation frequency. This ramp down of excitation frequency essentially shifts synchronous speed as the ramp down progresses, such that the torque speed curve changes shape during the deceleration event. 
If the motor and applied load happen to be rotating at the rated speed prior to the start of the ramp deceleration event, the reduction in excitation frequency drops synchronous speed and places this same point on the generator side of the torque speed curve. The counter torque of the generator action therefore opposes the rotational inertia of the spinning load and exports electrical energy. As the ramp down of excitation frequency progresses, the speed torque curve continues to change such that it continually decelerates the applied load. 